Once upon a time, there was a boy whose life was not very interesting at all. Nothing much happened in his town, which was disappointing because he always dreamed of going on a grand adventure like they have in storybooks. He tried to mix them up. He sometimes bragged to his classmates at school that he'd gone at midnight to the lake with the snapping turtles and met the swamp lady who lived there and had barely gotten away with his life. Then he told them that the king of the forest had tried to keep him prisoner, sending him around in circles until he managed to outwit him. He told them tall tales, short tales, and zigzaggy tales that went all over the place and didn't quite make sense. Eventually, they stopped listening. He decided then that he would make it happen. He would go on a real adventure, he'd be brave and clever, and when he got back from it, they'd all have to listen. Unfortunately, as established, nothing much happened in his town. He turned over stones looking for fairies, he spied through his neighbors' windows hoping they might secretly be ghouls, and even one stayed overnight at the graveyard waiting for zombies. Still, the creatures that lived in the other plane refused to show up. One night, when it was dark and stormy and just the right atmosphere to go on an adventure in, he decided that the thunder and lightning that had been striking the area all evening were in fact made by a giant who wanted to destroy the town. So he did what all storybook heroes do when faced with a giant. He found his brightest flashlight, and without stopping to change out of his pajamas, for heroes are determined by what's in their heart and not by their armor, he charged out into the dark, ready to fight it. Standing on the bridge he crossed every day on the way to school, he turned on the flashlight and began to duel the lightning. He swung it wildly across the sky and over the river, sometimes yelling things like, If you want this town, you'll have to go through me first, or Good will always defeat evil. So focused was he on the battle that he didn't even notice the family of shadows that lived under the bridge, who had been woken up by his yelling and the light he was using as a sword. As you must know, shadow creatures have very sensitive eyes, so you can imagine they were none too pleased that their children were now awake and crying, mere hours after they'd finally gone to bed. The oldest shadow put on their sunglasses that they'd cobbled together from the litter people were always dropping, reached out an arm, and snuffed out the flashlight. The boy cursed his carelessness in not checking the batteries, declared that he'd won, then turned around to go home, not seeing the disgruntled family of shadows that blended in with the dark. His victory against the giant had gifted him the ability to see auras. At least, that's what he told his classmates, though few were prepared to listen. In truth, staring directly into the lightning for so long had damaged his eyesight, and he now saw bright glowing halos around any lights. A small price to pay for saving the town, he thought. And though no one believed him, he knew himself to be a hero, and that was enough. Twenty years later, the boy had become an adult. He'd learned to fish and to build things and to take care of himself. And though he did his taxes and dull paperwork like a good citizen, he still secretly longed for a real adventure. One day, when his father purchased the antique sailing boat, the Leprechaun, he heard the call again. He helped his father repair the boat and stain the wood a beautiful shamrock green. When at last it was ready after weeks of labor, he knew he was meant to sail it far away to earn his story. He did not tell his father of the rainbow that he saw surrounding the ship, knowing by now it would do no good. I can see auras, he reminded himself. He checked for hours all around the boat, but could see neither leprechauns nor pots of gold. He went home disappointed, but not disheartened, secure in the knowledge that there was magic after all. A few nights later, on the way home from the dock, he saw something glowing in the brambles on the side of the road. He approached cautiously, knowing that it could be a baby giant just as easily as it could be a magic lamp. What he found was a shooting star that had fallen out of the sky. He sensed his adventure calling. With slow movements, he uncoiled the spare rope he had brought back, and with gentle hands but a firm knot, tied it around the star. He held the other end and pulled it free of the rambles, and after prodding it a few times, it flew back into the air and began to pull. Duties and responsibilities forgotten, he nearly ran back to the dock, pulling the star all the way. He tied the rope securely to the end of the bowsprit and set off to sea. Wherever this star went, he was sure he would find his adventure. I wish I could say he found it. Unfortunately, the world doesn't know what became of him, the star and the leprechaun. He sailed off into the horizon and was never seen again. The local sailors have said that some nights, you can still see a dot of light over the ocean, a bright, glowing spot with a halo around it, and they swear up and down that he's still out there, chasing his story, never to find the end. What stories can you come up with with the cubes that I rolled? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below.